All right, today is the last pre-calc section. What are we talking about today? We're going to be talking about matrices, modeling, context. Hard to believe you spent a year with these four uh, models, some would say. Uh, each of these three guys have, in some point of their life, modeled in some way. I'll show you some pictures today so you can believe me. But uh, this guy, me over here, hard, hard to believe, never a model. <laughs> I know. All right. Well, I hope you've learned a lot this year. We certainly have enjoyed working with you. Uh, let's get to um, using some matrices to model some situations. Some pretty cool ideas here. All right. So what we're going to talk about today is we're going to do one problem. Basically one problem. Lots to it, obviously, but we're going to do one problem, and then I'm going to have you try one. And this problem is the algebras are in competition with a group of teachers known as geom a tree tutors. They find that from one year to the next, there's a 15% probability that their followers will move over to the GAT team. They also discover there is a 25% chance of one of the current GAT followers moving over to the algebras and following them. So we're going to take this information. All right, this is called they're they're in a state. All right, from one state to the next. So from one year to the next, the algebras are losing a certain percent of their uh, followers, but at the same time gaining a certain percent from someone else. Now, the states we're going to work with are we're going to work with two states. All right. So in this in this one. We're either in the state of the algebras or we're with the GAT team, the geometry tutors. All right. I understand that a lot of these situations are going to be ones that maybe there are many more than two possibilities, and that's okay. But we're going to simplify this a little bit just for our understanding and introduction, perhaps, to keep it to two. All right. So what are we going to be talking about first? We are going to talk about what a transition matrix is, and that's going to help us really understand things better, all right? A transition matrix is a matrix that demonstrates the change from one state to another over a specific unit of time. All right, so if we look at our information up here, we have a couple of things. We have 15% that they're moving here, 25%. It doesn't look like a whole lot of information, but I think we can get a lot from that. All right, when I set up this matrix i really would like you to label things so my columns are going to be the algebras column here and the the gat team the geometry tutors all right and if you think about this this is going to be our current situation all right and then where things go all right so for example currently the algebras have to have 100 percent of their followers the GAT team has to have 100% of their followers. So in these columns, I want to make sure they add up to 100%. But from moving from one state to the next, we know that the algebras are going to lose 15%. They're going to go from the algebras to the GAT team. So I want to put 15% here. I'm going to put it as a decimal because we can't multiply with percents. So if this whole column is 100%, that means... What a what amount of going from the algebras from one state to the next staying with them? Well, 85% are going to stay with them. Now, I totally understand maybe there's a third group out there or a fourth or a fifth, but we're just using the simplified version for, for our understanding today. So we're saying they're either going to be with the algebras or with the GAT team. All right, so let's look at the GAT team, and it says they discover there's a 25% chance they go from the current GAT team to the algebra. So from the GAT team to the algebra is right here. And again, this whole column should be 100%. And there we have it. So that is our current column. We have 100% of our followers here. 15% of them are going to go to the GAT team. For the GAT team, 25% are going to go to the algebra. Now, are our rows going to add up to 100? No. In fact, we can see this is over 100. So... From one year to the next, the algebra should grow, correct? And the GAT team is less than 100, so from one year to the next, the amount of their followers should actually shrink. All right, let's take a look at how we can use this now. So it says, suppose there are currently, the algebra have 1,500 followers and the GAT has 200 followers. Okay, so we have 1,500 followers. The GAT team has 2,000 uh, followers, excuse me. I can write that as a vertex. All right, how many followers can we expect for each group next year? All right, so we have our matrix. 
Now, once you're using the matrix, I don't expect you to have labels, but I really do expect you to have some labels when I ask you for the transition matrix. All right, and the reason I want those labels is it's easier to come up with the matrix. All right, so we have our matrix. We're going to take our vector and we're going to multiply it. Now, today, I want you to understand that I really want you to be able to use the calculator on this, but I want to show you first why multiplying this is actually going to work. All right, I have a two by two and a two by one, so I know that I'm going to get a two by one in the end. All right. And this is going to be row one, column one, row one, column one. So let's just see what they're multiplying. This was the amount, the amount of algebras that stayed with the algebra. So 85% of my original number is going to stay. Then I'm going to add 25% of the geometry team. And that's why this works out. Likewise, the geometry tutors are going to take 15% of the algebras and add to that 75% of what they already had, okay? But I really want you to be able to do this in your calculator, all right? And you'll see why in a few minutes. But so, I want you to go in, second matrix, edit, have matrix A and matrix B. So pause for a second, all right? All right, welcome back. So we're gonna multiply these now. So matrix A, times matrix B. And we get 1,775. So now the algebras have 1,775 followers and the GAT team has 1,725 followers. All right. That's good to know as well, right? All right, that's great for next year. Now, what would I need to do to follow in, in two years? Well, I would need to multiply this now by my transition matrix again. But I want to show you a simpler way, okay? Essentially, this equals these two things multiplied together, right? So if I multiply this by my transition matrix again, I should get the answer for two years. Now, we know from mathematically speaking that if I multiply the same thing twice, I can actually, excuse me, 85, use some exponents. Repeated multiplication is exponents. So I'm gonna actually do squared times my original, and that will get me how many I have after two years. So let's take a look here. So after two years, I'm gonna go up here, I'm going to enter that. I'm going to go back. I'm going to insert the squared. So now I have the transition matrix for two years times my original one. And what do we get? 1940 and 1560. So 1940 and 1560. All right. So after one year, we have this. After two years, we have this situation here. That's awesome. All right. All right. So now we're going to talk about what a steady state is. And a steady state, if it exists, it doesn't always exist, is a state that does not change from one set transition to the next. So over time, maybe the followers are always going to be the same, right? Whatever that is. It could be the same all over time. So if we did it for four years and five years and six years, we get the same result back every time. So how can we do this? Well, we had our transition matrix, right? In our calculator was A, and we multiplied it by B, and that gave us one year, right? And we know that if we did it for two years, we got a new thing. So we could accelerate this a little bit. Let's maybe do it for 20 years. Let's see what happens when we put it in for 20 years. So the easiest way I find is go up there to the top one, highlight it, bring it down. I'm going to go up. I'm going to put it for 20. So in 20 cycles, 20 transitions, we have 2,187 for the algebras, 1,313 rounded for the GAT team. Let's see what happens 
in 10 more cycles. So let's go for 30 years, see what happens. Look at that, it's the same. It's essentially the same, right? So that is a steady state. So what would our steady state be? We would say our steady state would be 2187 and 1313. All right, and that is because over time, it doesn't change. We went from 20 transitions to 30. Now, I just randomly chose 20, right? Pretty much. Sometimes it's not that. Sometimes you have to go higher. I like to go by gaps of 10 because it makes it accelerate really quickly. And you can find out sooner or later if it's actually going to have a steady state or not. Okay? Now, can we use this information to find out how many we had last year? Well, let's set up a situation. We know that our matrix T, our transition matrix times our initial uh, state where we had um, our two by one, right? And we had our two by two. That equaled the next year, correct? Okay, well in this situation, we have our transition matrix, right? And we don't know what this was because it's the last year, but we know that this year, it was this. So how can we do this? Ah, I think a lot of you already knew the answer because we did this last time, right? We can take the inverse of that matrix. All right. So in our cat cutter, we're actually going to be doing the inverse of A times B. And this is going to help us find last year, our state last year, what we, what we were in last year. So let's go up here. All right. So I'm going to do second matrix. Now, I don't know why, but whenever I have an inverse, I like to start completely over. So inverse of A times the inverse of B, and there we have it. So last year, the groups had, let's see, 1,042 and 2,458. So 1,042 and 2,458. That would be last year's numbers okay now the one bad thing about this is you can't really do this and change that to a negative two it doesn't work that way the inverse doesn't work that way but if you wanted to find two years ago you could find this do the inverse of that again and find the one year before okay before i move on i want to point out a few things hopefully you saw these are the the situations where the algebras were modeling mr kelly it was a hat model Turned out to be a very successful campaign. I think he sold 10 hats. Mr. Mr. Bean here, calculator model, very nice. Sold millions of TI calculators. Great job. And of course, Mr. Bruss was a former fitness model, um, and no one actually went to the gym after that, so it was not very successful. All right, so I want you to try this one on your own. I want you to pause the screen, read the situation, do A and B on your own, all right, let's see what you come up with. All right, my trans transition matrix, I have Verizon here, so that's got to add up to 100%, and 82% of the, their customers stayed with them, but 18% went to T-Mobile, all right? Over here, I know that T-Mobile, 12% of them went to Verizon, and 88% stayed with them. Their overall market share, now this is a little bit different from last time, so this is 45%, so I changed it to 0.45, and this is 30%, 0.3. Now, this doesn't add up to 100. There's other uh, other telecom situations out there that might um, be taken into consideration, right? All right, so after one year, I multiplied A times B, and I got um, Verizon has a 41% share of the market, and telecom has a 35% share of the market. So Verizon's going down, telecom's going up. After two years, ooh, almost identical, right? Very close to both being about 37%. I could do three years, I could do eight years, whatever I wanted here. All right. So pause the video again and try C and D all on your own. All right. So I did um, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. From 20 to uh, 30, looked like 30%, 44%, really 45%. And um, that's pretty much straight across, right? I just wanted to show you that is a steady state, the long term distribution. That's a steady state. That's going to be the same. So Verizon's going to have about 30% of the market over the long 
haul unless something changes. And um, T-Mobile is going to have about 45% of the overall market. All right. All right. What was their share last year? Okay. So I did the inverse of my transition matrix. I multiplied it by my current year. And I got 51% for Verizon, 24% for T-Mobile. All right. So that is how you do that. Best of luck. Um, it's a little redundant, but it's kind of cool to see this. I'm um, hopefully you enjoy some of the situations that this could be used in some population things, migration of animals and things like that. As always, it's been fun. Solving out.